Hey, I'm Mark Morgenstern. Welcome to my video series on the human side of buying and selling businesses. And it's all based on one of my maxims. People, not spreadsheets, are the epicenter of every deal. There have been lots of influences on my life. The 400 deals I've done is certainly part of them. Selling encyclopedias door to door was part of it. Following the Grateful Dead for five decades was part of it. It's also worth mentioning that I taught a course at UC Berkeley that I created called Street Smart Startups. It was all based on my book, The Soul of the Deal. Well, a long time ago, in a land far, far away, which is normally called Silicon Valley, I was the senior strategic advisor to a really interesting startup. They had phenomenal technology, really promising. The little problem was they had no money. They had no cash. We obtained a distributor. We thought they were great. They were a global powerhouse. The only problem was they couldn't sell our product. 12 months went by. Now we have less cash. We hire another distributor. We give them fancy contract terms to persuade them. We say, hey, you're our distributor, and if we ever wanted to get rid of you, we'd give you six months' notice, just to be fair. Once again, no sales, no cash. Time is running out. We have no money. What could we possibly do? The investors won't re-up. If you can't get more money from your investors, if you can't get more cash, all you can really do is sell the company. So that's what we decided to do. Even with that minimal background, you might imagine that it wasn't a happy camper family. The board was deeply divided. The employees were unhappy. The founders were unhappy. It was a strange set of circumstances and one that it wasn't easy to get anything done in. Here's what they asked me to do and here's what I agreed to do. They asked me to run the sale of the company with, in conjunction with an iBanker, but I do all the negotiating for the company. Okay, that's a perfectly normal thing that I've done many, many times. Hired the iBanker, nothing happened. With that level of dysfunction at the board, I didn't want to go through, negotiate every point, and then come back to a board and be told no. I didn't want to come back to the shareholders and told no. I didn't want anyone to upset a deal that I was negotiating, which was inherently fragile. So what I said to them was, I'm perfectly willing to do this. Here's what you have to agree to. Whatever I do negotiating, I have the power to do. Whatever I agree to binds the directors and binds the shareholders. I'm perfectly willing to inform the board what I'm doing as I go along, but they can't override me. They can't veto what I'm doing. If I don't have that freedom to act, and if I don't have that certainty that I can actually close, then this is a purposeless exercise, and I'm not interested in doing it. I'll just say, thank you for the opportunity. Let me reset the time and place. We're still in Silicon Valley, but now the time is seven months before our cash runs out. We know what we spend every month, we assume there won't be any sales, there won't be any revenue. We have seven months left before the company just shuts down. What do you think you would do? Well, I don't know. Here's what I did. I fired our distributor. The board, when I informed them, said they're our only distributor. They're the only source of revenues. I said, have you noticed that they've given us any revenues? So they're more like a theoretical distributor. Maybe they'll sell something. But more importantly, they're the most logical buyer of this company. They know the most about it. They know the customers. They know the value proposition. They're the only ones in the world probably who actually know the value of what we do, but they're backed by a PE fund. They're kind of cautious and conservative, and they're never gonna pull the trigger and buy this company unless we give them a really strong reason to do that. The real strong reason I gave them was I fired them. I got their attention. I gave them what I call as an urgency accelerator. The distributor's CEO, very nice guy, sort of went crazy and called me and said, Mark, what are you doing? And I explained pretty much what I just explained to you and said, this isn't personal, Jack. You would do exactly the same thing if you were me. I've got buyers and I've got buyers who are not gonna wanna have you be the exclusive distributor. So I have to fire you. And he said, wait, there are other buyers? I said, I didn't say that. Okay, now I had his attention. Now there are people competing and now he could lose his distribution and the value that he was selling to his customers. And a very slow dance began, and it played out over several months. I had a couple of phone calls with him. I didn't pursue him. I just let the time and tempo be established. And finally, one day, he really responded to one of my maxims, which is, if something's important, do it in person. He invited me to breakfast. 
I said, okay, neutral site, diner, works for me, that'll be fun. We sat down and he started to reach into his jacket, sort of like this, he was gonna pull something out and he said, I've got a signed letter of intent in here. I said, whoa, 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 Jack, stop your hand from moving, just stop the train right there. He said, why? I said, because your offer is too low and your offer is too low. He said, Mark, you haven't seen my offer yet. How could you possibly know that it's too low? I said, well, it's pretty easy, really. No one puts their best offer on first, so I know it's too low. Anybody else buying this business is buying it for offense. They're looking at the huge upside. You're looking at it for defense. You want to still be able to ship product to the customers you have. So everybody else is valuing the company differently because it is a different value to them. So your purchase price is also too low. And here's the final meeting. I spent from memory, either 10 or 12 hours, I don't know. It was a very long day in a very small interior conference room with no windows. It was a little intense, but we reached agreement. We reached a very simple business person's agreement. We shook hands and I said, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna take what we just agreed, turn it into like a very short agreement because this is really simple at the end of the day. All we're doing is selling you some intellectual property and you're hiring some employees. It isn't like you're doing a massive merger between IBM and Google. So it should be a very straightforward, simple document. I went back, I asked my law firm to create a six page document. They said it couldn't be done. I said, yes it can, because it needs to be done, because that's what we're doing. They said, we can't do that. I said, okay, I'm not firing you, but I'm pausing you. I'm going to a lawyer who can draft that agreement for me, and once I get it signed, you'll run the rest of the deal. I went to another lawyer. He said, you can't do this. I said, okay, I give up. I'm going to draft it, then you read it. But that's what I'm handing him. And that's what I did. A week went by. I got a, an email from him. It had an attachment. It was about a 60-page document. His lawyers had taken my document, taken about four paragraphs from it, put it into their standard 60-page deal, and reset it. I didn't bother reading it. I didn't bother reading it because by the time I negotiated a 60-page agreement, I've got 30 days of cash left, I would be out of cash. I couldn't afford to negotiate a 60-page agreement. So I called the CEO and I said, you can't see me, we're not in the same room, but let me describe it to you. In my left hand, I've got a six-page agreement that I sent you, which is exactly what you and I agreed to. In my right hand, I have a 60-page document that apparently your lawyers sent Apparently your lawyers want to buy a different company under different terms. I wish them really good luck. But if you want to buy this company, we're going to use the six page agreement where there's no deal. Just let me know what you want to do. A day went by, he called back, he said, they've, they've made it 10 pages. I said, okay, I can probably live with 10 pages, send it over. And we got the deal closed about two weeks before we run, ran out of cash. We created scarcity, we created urgency, we gave him a motivation he didn't have, and we gave him leverage not to use against, but to use in getting alignment with his own board who really wanted to buy the company, and we're gonna keep pressing endlessly unless they knew there was a real deadline. If you've listened to all of this, and I'd like to say thank you for that, and you wanna learn more, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of The Soul of the Deal. Find a link in the description of this video.